Well, hey guys, welcome back to Figure It Out. I am ready to jump into the next build, and one of the things that I would really love to do is to take this alien figure called the Big Chap, which is pretty recent from NECA, and uh, combine it with this Brett figure, which we unboxed a little bit ago when we did our alien unboxing, and um, combine them in a scene, the Brett death scene uh, in the movie, the original movie Alien, 1979 coming out, and it was a groundbreaking and uh, absolutely terrifying film for its day. Spoiler alert. Uh, first time we see in the movie the actual full-sized creature itself, and if you recall that scene, uh, the alien kind of comes down out of this room and grabs hold of Brett's head and then shoots its secondary jaw into his brain pan and kills him. And so my thought is with these two figures and kind of pushing them together and seeing what they can do together, uh, maybe create that moment right before that second jaw comes uh, jumping out. Going to do some research, going to take a look at some photos and of course watch that scene over and over again just to see what that looks like and go from there. So pretty excited about it. So this build is not as straightforward as I thought it might be. This is a picture of the room in which Brett dies. You can see those large, huge pieces of landing gear hanging in the middle. You can see Brett there on the right. The actual death takes place in the far back side of the room. And so <clears throat> you see all these landing gear in the way of the scene itself. Here's another picture of the landing gear. You can see, you see the, how massive it is and how the lighting is mostly from the top. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see the back wall is sort of a grid. It's got these weird like round shields that are on there and the, and the, the floor is pretty flat. That's about it. A couple of ambient lights hitting the walls from the side. So we're gonna try something here that maybe I haven't done before. Part of that is gonna be, I'm gonna have to start mocking some things up. So I just put some foam down, sort of taped some walls. Obviously the walls need to be taller than this and then put the figures in place to see how these might fit together. I also built a landing gear, kind of a fake landing gear out of cardboard just to see what it'd be like to have one of these pieces in the diorama itself. Now because the death takes place in that far back corner, if I were actually put these landing gear in the diorama, they're gonna be out in the middle, they'd be really in the way itself. So we'll see how we go with that. I did find some grid walls. These are actually for an aquarium, for the bottom of an aquarium, but they work really well. So I found those at the pet store and thought I'd start taping some stuff in place, put the cat Jonesy in place as well, the figures, and just see how we can make this look. Well, I need to go ahead and, and trim the grid to size. So I'm using my cutoff tool. I'm going to save this end piece that I'm cutting off to put into the floor because the floor has a kind of a, a, a drain in it and then I'll use that and then I'm going to cut the rest of it to size so it'll fit the wall of the diorama itself. Okay, well, here's an honest truth as it pertains to this alien build, um, this Brett death scene. I got my base pieces cut out and kind of mapped everything and I just didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It didn't have really any of the character that I wanted this particular diorama to have to make it look like something from the movie. I, I don't know what it was, but I just didn't like the positioning. I didn't like the way that the figures were in the mock-up. So I'm, all, I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna do something, I don't know yet, uh, but I'm looking back into the images that I've pulled on the internet and I'm gonna try to find something that I like. So back to square one. So having rebooted this project, I am 
Going ahead and cutting out some different forms. We're gonna make it a little bit wider, a little bit taller, and I'm gonna hang some landing gear in the diorama itself. Now I'm changing the perspective. Now the perspective is gonna be as if the camera is in the back corner filming toward the door. Well, if I'm gonna hang these large pieces of landing gear, I'm gonna to have to shore up this structure. So I've got to make a plywood uh, wrap around for all the foam or else it's gonna sag, especially the top. So I'm cutting out my pieces now. Here you can see again the room. I'm Now I'm gonna look at the landing gear themselves. They're pretty detailed and I'm just gonna make a half of a landing gear. So I took that, that cardboard piece and I cut it in half and I'm gonna kind of make it to where there's two halves of landing gear perspective wise. I do not have a hot wire table and so I had to figure out how I could make some straight cuts with this foam. <clears throat> so I simply clamped together some wooden pieces and ran the hot wire across those wooden pieces. Now I've got some shapes glued up on these half pieces of landing gear. I'm going to put on some plaster to fill in all the gaps, all the cracks to make it look like a solid piece and any imperfections in the foam. And now I'm going to start putting on the little bits to make it look like the picture itself. You to add detail by putting some additional foam pieces to build out those um, little individual panels along the side of the landing gear. I'm going to use some foam and then once I get all the foam cut and glued on, we're going to move on to some stir sticks that I found that'll make kind of the outline of each of these little panels. These stir sticks cut pretty easily with those uh, tin snips, those shears that I have, and that saved me a lot of effort with the razor blade. But uh, since I was going to go ahead and plaster all this together as well, once I get all the pieces on, I didn't have to worry too much about any of the, the cracks in between the, the pieces. So I'll fill all that in with plaster. Well, hey guys, I'm about halfway through this build. Think about figuring out this diorama. A couple of things, what, first of all, is doing a science fiction or something like a Star Wars or some kind of space odyssey type build is completely different than doing a terrain build or something like dungeon or stone. Something with very precise shapes, and very precise um, corners, things like that much different and much more difficult. I think I got a little narrow focused when it came to materials that I should be using for this build. I've built the majority of this out of foam and I think at this moment I think it was a mistake. We'll see how this build concludes but as it is right now I'm already fully into it. I'm, I'm ready to kind of wrap up the 
the build part and start painting so I'm not gonna change what I'm doing but in the future I need material with a lot more precise edges something that doesn't dent as easy or uh, break as easy as the foam does. Uh, another thing that I noticed is as I have done some primer on some of this foam that the spray paint that I was using for some of the primer actually melted some of the foam. I don't know if you guys have experienced that but I've had to back off of that and and kind of re I had to fix some of that foam, redo it with some plaster and to make that to smooth it out again and uh, did not know that that was going to happen. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this thing called uh, self-doubt or self-talk, uh, negative self-talk. So as I have been working through you know, this first part of this project, uh, I've been looking at other YouTube videos and watching some different videos and I came across one. He, at the end of his video, he's doing this massive castle and started talking about that at the, kind of toward the end of some of his builds, he has some negative talk. And I just yesterday was having a very similar conversation with myself that I'm not very good at this, I'm not doing well. Uh, I'm never going to be like some of the other guys that I see on the internet and I really had to take a step back and just stop that kind of negative talk. I also had someone on my Instagram account uh, take a look at one of the builds that I did and I mean it's my second build and they took a look at that and they were like, oh I can tell you're a professional, I would never try this at home for myself. And I reached back out to him and was like, that is not even true. That's not even close to being true. I'm not a, by, a professional by any means. I mean, I'm flattered that somebody would think that because there's so many flaws to that build that I just put out there. But uh, regardless, there was an example of some negative self-talk saying, I can't do this. Let me just tell you something. That is not true. And it's not true for me as well. I cannot compare myself to Neil who's been doing this for I don't know how many years or some of these other guys that have been doing this for multiple years and have multiple projects under their belt and all the experience. I just have to think about, am I enjoying what I'm doing right now? And if I'm enjoying it, if you're enjoying it, then just press on. Work to improve your skill set. Work to uh, gain that experience. Uh, find different ways to you know, create solutions for whatever that problem is that's right in front of you for whatever build you're doing. And if I, if you start comparing yourself to someone else, then that negativity will creep in and it will rob you of your fun. It will rob you of your joy. So don't do it. I had to stop myself from doing it, looking at some of the amazing things that people have done out there and just go, you know what? I'm not there yet. It doesn't mean I can't get there. And it certainly doesn't mean I should stop what I'm doing just because I'm not there yet. Uh, I hope you'll watch the second part of this build and we'll see how this uh, xenomorph alien movie diorama turns out. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the end of it. So tune in for the, for the next one and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching Figure It Out.